Good evening. Welcome everybody to another evening for our Master Your Gear series sponsored by our organization, MPPA, and our manufacturing team of Sony. Uh, tonight, we're going to have back with us Andre Chung, independent award-winning photographer specializing in capturing moments, conveying emotion, and communicating images both still in motion images. Using bulk composition and emotional content to connect with individuals, he tells stories that matter. Documentary style photography and dramatic portraitry, he has honed over a 30-year career in newspapers and magazines. He has created images for a range of clients, including the Washington Post, Political, ESPN, NBC News, The Atlantic, Ebony Magazine, Apple, NAACP, he is one of the select group of photographers chosen in 2009 and 2013 to work on the official inaugural book for President Barack Obama. He was staff photographer for one, over 12 years with the Baltimore Sun before he was on the staff of the Chicago Sun-Times. He has been an independent photographer since 2008 and married the girl who encouraged him to pick up the camera way back when he was 19. They live in Columbia, Maryland and have raised two great kids. He says, I switched to Sony a year ago because they changed, because they have developed a fleet of cameras that are positioning for what kind of visual work you do. The camera are light and handle well, and the glass is amazing. Uh, with him tonight is the Sony Pro, uh, Ben Manlove, who's been a, a support rep in the Midwest, based in Minneapolis. He's been with Sony for nearly 10 years, and in his current role, he provides outreach support, education to professional photographers and videographers. As an avid photographer, he loves his role at Sony, allows him to use the best imaging available for all kinds of situations. Now, this Master Your Gear ser series is about to, to, we all in a position where we get a camera, and most of the time we don't read the manuals. Uh, this series is an opportunity for us to take a deep dive into the, to the equipment and really find out the best features and how to work them. So I hand this over now to Andre and Benjamin. Thank you. And, and we have, please, we also have Stingray Schuler, our uh, master of, uh, of the series who keeps things going and working in the background. If you have any questions you want to raise, uh, please put them in the chat and he will raise the questions with the panelists. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks, Akili. Uh, so, Andre. Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, how are you? I, I am uh, doing swell. <laughs> <laughs> Much better now. Today, today was a challenge, as sometimes everything is, but yes. you know, yeah. it, it's going well. I'll say you're, you're uh, biography, I don't think I had seen this beforehand, before Akili read it, and I think you really summed up our cameras better than, than probably I could, so um, <laughs> I think we could just go and, and sign off and, and, and everyone would be happy, but uh, we can't, so we, we'll be here and answer everyone's questions. Um, so let's just Kind of, kind of start with you know. Obviously, you're you're using right now the A7R, correct? Yeah, correct, correct. I've got an R4, which we'll be talking about tonight, and I've got an R3. Yeah, yeah. So, for those folks listening, if you're not familiar with our lineup, you know we've got our A7 series, which denotes full frame. So we've got the entry level A7 III. Uh, Andre's also now testing our A7C, which stands for compact. Uh, there you go. Um, after those models, we've got kind of the, the S and the R series. The S stands for sensitivity. We're going to be talking about the R, which stands for resolution. And then we also have our Alpha 9, which for high speed, and then our new Alpha 1, which is like the kitchen sink. It just does everything all at once. Now, I personally really love the R series for the, the resolution. And, you know, I've been shooting with the R really kind of since it came out. It's really just been kind of my, my favorite. Um, now the R4, obviously the, the highlight of that camera is the 61 megapixels. And, and Andre, how does that work in your workflow? What, what do you, uh, well, use, how do you use that? I do a lot of portrait photography and, um, 
and and you know quite often I'm getting you know full bleeds across magazines and whatnot and uh, and I also print and the the 61 megapixels in this thing I remember when I when I when I bought it I was like who needs 61 megapixels like for real like it's too much like you know and but then I shot with it and I blew it up and I kept blowing it up and I kept blowing it up and I was like this thing is amazing so for me you know the the the, the range how uh, uh the, the the color that that comes off of it um how dynamic it all is is a real plus for me in my work okay great so you are you know obviously like that resolution i like it personally as well i mean because you've got that large printing capability for mm -hmm. sure I say that, as you can see, my walls right now are completely empty, which is <laughs> <laughs> except for a lovely print um, that that I was gifted. But um, the obviously you can print with it. You've got a lot of cropping space as well, which is nice because you know sometimes, especially on the fly, right, your composition is maybe not always ideal. You know, obviously you try to get as right in camera as you can. Sure. Um, and you're doing a lot of portrait work right now. Um, are you using the eye focusing on the camera as well? I am, and and uh, I was looking at a take uh, from earlier this week, um, or from last week rather. I was looking at it earlier this week, uh, and um, I was shooting into the sun. Mm -hmm. um, I was using the sun as 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 basically as a backlight and let it bleed across the shoulder, and I had set up uh, a light to pop in front give it a little bit of direction and just, you know, give it some pop. And, um, but I couldn't really see him, you know, because I'm shooting into the sun and I just had to trust that little green dot on his eyes. And as I'm coming, looking at it in Lightroom, I'm like, okay, I like this one. Let me double check. Ooh, shark's attack. Okay, let me look at the next one. Shark's attack. None of them missed. None of them missed. And I couldn't see a damn thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I can't complain on this eye focus. It's just amazing. And if he turns his head, it will switch to the next eye. It, it just locks on. It stays on. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, I know we had um, talked a little bit earlier uh, about, you know, the autofocus system and that kind of thing. And by earlier, folks, I don't mean like we, we missed a part of the discussion. We did this la last, last week. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're saying, man, it feels like a week is like a month right now Yo, but yeah. it's getting it's getting better right i finally feel like we left march of 2020 you know like is it is it not 2020 anymore uh no <laughs> <laughs> but i heard that 2021 unfortunately it didn't lose so it, it won yeah my yeah. jokes are no good i'm sorry <laughs> um but you know that the camera has what we call the real-time tracking focus right mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm. did you did you we talked about this a little bit, but did you have you tried that out beyond? So, because the real time tracking, it'll track the object based on, you know, size and shape and depth and distance and all of this business and color recognition. But then yeah. it uses AI to like find the face and the eye as well. Do you use that tracking focus as well? So definitely, we had talked about the settings on it uh, last week, and what we, and you really helped me to kind of because, like Achilles was saying, I'm not somebody who reads the manual. I know no, that's fine. I, I do, which is, that's my job though. Right. right. <laughs> and, and we had talked about like the best way to set it, uh, what works best in a certain situation. I haven't had an assignment since we talked last week where I can really put that into play, but I think that I had actually stumbled into what works best just by playing with the settings on my own. A um, little bit of trial and error. I, I think in, in regular news photography, I don't really shoot sports, but I'm sure, sure this is, these are probably great sports cameras as well. Um, the, uh, the, but in the news, because I covered a lot of protests last year, um, and, and I set mine to wide on tracking, and that helped me to be able to, to grab a face, grab the face I needed, and no matter what was going on, it would hold it. Um, if I grab the wrong face, I mm -hmm. could just recompose quickly. I mean, really quickly and just shift it and it would pick up the next face and then lock on and follow it. 
So uh, for, for me, it works really well. Um, I'm interested to try some of the things that we had talked about with what yeah. was it, expandable, uh, the flexible spot. Flexible and, spot, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. We had the with the small, medium, large. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, you, you can talk more about that. But oh, I, I, I can wax for an hour about our autofocus. <laughs> 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 I, I won't, but actually, you know, because I know some folks are here to kind of learn a little bit more about the camera too, as well. I mean, obviously, we're going to talk, I want to talk more about your images because um, you're a much better photographer than I am. But the, um, I do have through the magic of an HDMI switcher. Um, I'm going to show some of the folks out here exactly what that would look like. So um, I'm going to pull up my camera and you can see we've got really boring desk, which I just, just cleaned off. And we have the function menu on the camera. And here's where we can go through and choose these different modes, right? So like you're up here in wide, we could choose zone or the different spot sizes. I like this tracking flexible spot. And what the camera will do is once it locks in, right, like that green box locks on to that uh, face cream there that uh, I handily have on this desk, it'll just follow it around. Um, and if there were a face in there, it would then switch to a face and then the eye and, and so on and so forth. So I think that that really um, is great. And we have some of your images before you jump to my images, that, yeah, that little, yeah, I, was looking at, I was looking at the green box there and I noticed two lines on the side. Does yeah. that note flexible spot? I, it's not the face recognition box. Right. No, that's, that box just denotes like when you got the green square with the two sides, that's uh -huh. just saying that the camera has a acquired focus and that it's, it's now locked on to that subject. Oh, okay. Okay. So I did a really great job earlier about sharing the screen during our technical trial. So let's make sure I can do this again. So we'll wait for that. There was a, um, not, uh, not a question about the Sony camera, but Matthew uh, Diagostino, hopefully I'm saying that right, uh, one, wanted to know how amazing it was to publish both the cover and inside double spread with your son, Andre. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. That was, uh, so my son had, he just graduated in December, 2019 and was looking for a job and then COVID, right? And then he was kind of twisting in the wind because everybody who was about to hire him said, sorry, we're not hiring. And uh, in June, you know, when the protest started, I said, let's go hit the street. And uh, he had been, you know, I've been, he'd been my assistant since he was 14. I've been training him. And so he had picked up a lot of stuff through osmosis more than I had realized, to be honest. And, um, you know, the next thing I know, we have, we're both in the same Washington Post magazine. I had the cover and he had, he had that, that opener inside and we were beside ourselves. So thanks for whoever asked about that. But that was definitely uh, a big highlight in the family. Yeah, that was from Matthew Diagostino. Hey, Matt, what's going on, Matt? Zoom is such an awkward format sometimes. You know, you can like, talk to somebody and they can't. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. But, Dag, you're the man. Thanks for checking in, man. That's a really great story, though. That's fantastic. Um, so, can you see preview up on, on the screen here? I can, yep. Okay, great. So, let me just move this here. So obviously, uh, where do you want to start, Andre? You sent over several images. Wherever you want to start, wherever you want to start. Okay, so let's uh, start right here. Do you want to get, tell us a little more about this, this image right here? Sure, um, this was for uh, a piece, uh, it, it was a section in the Washington Post Magazine uh, called In Memoriam. And they usually kind of go back and kind of review, uh, if I have it right, they review notable deaths through the year. But in 2020, you know, it was, it was all COVID. And um, so, so I had to do a story. I had to go to Philly on some stuff, go to New York on some other stuff. But this was here in the district where I'm based. And 
this was a pretty difficult story. Their, their story in particular was pretty difficult. Um, we shot at a, a uh, like a temporal COVID memorial and all of these flags represented the number of COVID deaths at the time. And I think it was 300 some thousand at this point. And the artist came out and planted all these flags in this field near the old RFK stadium. And we met this family here and the woman on the right, let me see if I get it right now. She lost her husband, who is the woman on the left's father, as that's her daughter. The daughter also lost her husband, which is the young boy's father. And okay. so it, it was really, really telling about the way COVID has just run through communities and um, and has impacted families in really devastating ways. So so they st stood for a portrait for us, and uh, yeah, definitely it was really appreciated. Yeah, that's a tough story for sure. Yeah. Um, when when you're out there with this, I mean, obviously, I mean, are you thinking on the fly, like in terms of compositionally, or are you just kind of getting getting them together? Like what's going um, ahead when you're doing that? Yeah, I think a little bit about the tone of, of what needs to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And then typically my, my approach is to, uh, once I kind of understand the story, I understand the tone, that, that kind of informs uh, whatever my location is gonna be. You know, sometimes I'll call ahead, like in the case of the previous photo, um, I had, thought about this backdrop. I think I might have talked about it with my editor. I might have talked about it with the writer. I know I had discussed this backdrop. Okay. And I called them and I asked them to meet us there. Um, and and you know, once I once I arrive, you know, I kind of scout it that this is our best place. And I try to stay thinking about the tone of whatever the story is uh, sure. when I make the portrait. Sometimes there's more to work with, sometimes there's less. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we got next one here. We got this gentleman uh, sitting in look like look like maybe his garden or something. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? Sure. I mean, you know, I, it's kind of funny because this is this is the same from part of the same story, and uh, because in 2020 I was not shooting indoors, pretty mm -hmm. much everything was outdoors, and um, this was uh, this gentleman here, I believe he had lost his cousin to COVID, but he also ran a community radio station, which was reporting on COVID in the community east of the river here in DC, um, which is predominantly black community. And uh, I mean, if you all recall, you know how COVID ripped through the black community and uh, really, really had a major impact. And um, he, uh, it, this this was in a garden outside of his was it was his studio no this was his artist space he also has an artist space um, and that that also is is lit the same the same sun that Dag was asking about was holding the light on camera left there so yeah yeah very nice and we should should we zoom in and take a look at it sure yeah of course very oh man I lost it lost it yeah it's too too many pixels there we uh, go. So very nice and sharp, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, that again goes to that extra resolution, right? From something yeah. like this, you know, you could crop that nice, or you could, um, um, you know, print it full full bleed and be very nice. Mm -hmm. So and you zoomed in so far on that when you look at like you yeah. went to the you went to the face, yep. and that's like what five percent of the image. Yeah, it's just a teeny tiny fraction of it. Absolutely, yeah. And you know that kind of I don't know if you ever shoot with the APS-C crop on the camera. Have you ever tried enabling that? No. So that'll like just you know give you a one and a half times punch in and uh, you still get about 26 megapixels, which is a lot. <laughs> wow. Um, alternately, I don't know if you've ever tried like if you frame it horizontal, the extra resolution you can then flip the flip it in post, crop it vertically, and you still get a very usable. Um, yeah, I have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what do we got? Uh, oh, I skipped one, but we'll we'll go here and we can come back. 
Sure. This was from, uh, so this was during, you know, the season of protests. This was uh, uh, last, early last fall, I believe it was maybe September. Um, there was a young man named Dion Kay who was killed by Metropolitan Police. And uh, it was over in the seventh district, which again, east of the river. And um, the community outpouring uh, against his death was huge. And this woman here was, uh, she was on the, uh, the Neighborhood Advisory Commission, I forget how, it's ANC Commissioner or, or something like that for that particular uh, part of the city. And um, uh, uh, a, a few hundred people uh, marched onto the 7th District Headquarters in protest. And it, it did get pretty tense, um, but she grabbed the megaphone, stood on uh, uh, a big planter out there and was completely outraged at what had happened. So we were able to, you know, I was able to capture this and, and it, it really was one of the images that, that I think set the tone uh, yeah. for what was going on out there. Yeah, it's really got a, a very distinct feel for sure. I mean, like, you, you, you could see her rage, right? Which is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now it's pretty dark. What time of day was this? Oh, wow, this had to be, I want to say it was maybe 9 30 10 o'clock okay you no know? um and uh we we had we had street lamps mm -hmm. um so this is existing light there's, there's no flash i'm not i i use lights when when i'm making portraits but yeah. when I'm doing documentary work um no flash uh this is likely at 6400 mm -hmm. uh, because of the 61 megapixels, it, it the R3 performs a little bit better with the 41 yeah, megapixels agreed. in the dark. Um, so I cap my my auto ISO at 6400 because I think that's about for me for my taste that's the limit. Yeah. Of no, the I I agree 100. percent I mean, I will sometimes push it to 12.8, like, but the exposure has to be spot on. Spot on. Like you can't me mess that. Yeah. No. So actually, I, I really like that you brought that up. Um, sometimes I get the side eye when I suggest auto ISO. Um, is that something that you use frequently? I mean, I like yeah. it because I think it makes my life easier. You know, I just oh, set yeah. the boundary range, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I like to shoot. I still shoot manual, essentially. You know, I'm choosing yeah. my f-stop. I'm choosing my shutter because that tells me how the picture's going to look. Yeah. Um, and, and I have the speed of not having to worry about changing my ISO to match, you know, my, my, uh, my chosen shutter and, and aperture values. I can just, I'll know how this picture is going to look and the ISO will get it for me. And then yeah. the good thing, this is one of the things that I really love about the mirrorless as opposed to the DSLRs that I've been using the last couple of decades mm -hmm. is that I know what my picture is going to look like when I look through the viewfinder. Yeah. You know, if it's under, I know it's under. Right. You know? And and that that alone has been a huge game changer for me. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, that was like one of the very first benefits of mirrorless. And I think we forget that sometimes until you get so used to it that when you go back to a SLR, you're like, what's my exposure gonna be? What's my white balance gonna be? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know about you, but it like it helps me reduce chimping because you can see oh, it yeah. beforehand. Yeah, and the R three to the R four. I don't know if you've noticed the viewfinder is huge. Like the R four has got this really, it's like five point seven million dot viewfinder. Like mm -hmm. it's it's really good. I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I think it highlights too that you know the R certainly will do high ISO. Maybe not always the best choice, but it'll certainly do it. Um, did you do any video of, of these protests at all, or is it just, this is all stills? I didn't shoot any video of it. The, the same son Dag asked about, though, is shot a documentary on, on an A7S3, maybe? No, wait, I don't know what he bought. But sure. yeah, yeah, and uh, his stuff looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Now the R do absolutely does do video too, and I don't know if you've tried it. The uh, I'm sorry to move this around. Just want to make sure I can see something here. 
the um, the camera does do like a touch to track as well, which is kind of neat. I know you're talking about doing touch the track, really? Yeah, yeah. So you can actually just like you know while you're shooting video, you can do it with stills. Uh -huh. I, I find it's better for video, is you can frame up your subject and just uh, tap on the on the screen, and then it'll engage that real time tracking and follow them around. Oh, really? Okay, I'm trying. I guess I probably have to turn on that touch piece. Huh? Yeah, do you want to see where it is? I'll show you real quick. I hit the trash can button on the back, and it says touch operation on. Yeah, here. OK. We'll keep this kind of loose, and people can see all this. So uh, for all you out there who have one of our cameras, pro tip, if you want to move through the menus, you can just tab, hit the function button. It'll tab through them. But when you go into that purple camera tab here, and you go all the way, sorry, my Minnesota accent's coming out there, all the way to the end. And under custom operation, you see where it says, it say function of touch operation? Yeah. So I can't do this right now because uh, my camera's in through HDMI. But you, you can. So when you go into that function of touch operation menu, it'll say uh, like touch tracking. And that's a touch focus. Okay, touch tracking. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So just make sure that's turned on. Okay. And then I like it a lot for video because I, you know, I don't really shoot like touching the screen for stills. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, something about motion it just lends itself to it more. Mm -hmm. But you can just then tap on your subject and it'll do the whole tracking. It'll do the eye focusing and everything like that really? uh, in the video as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still going to resist reading the manual, but this is really cool stuff. That's okay. You you have my phone number, so you can <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, through, through that magic of Zoom, I can just you know show you my H my screen and. Yeah, there you go, man. There you it, go. It's great. Oh, so um, question for you though, man. Yeah. What is this button on the side Ooh. of the lens? Yes, yeah, so that's one of my favorite buttons. So as we you kind of saw. When we're going through this menu, right, where it says, you know, custom operation, uh -huh. you pass this, this custom key setup. So on the outside of the camera, you've got something like, don't hold me to this number, 13 different buttons that you can do. And okay. you can customize those. So okay. I'll go into this little menu here where it says custom key for stills. I can now go through and it'll show me a map of the camera. And I can set my custom keys. So like I shoot the alpha nine and the alpha one as well. So I like to put silent shooting on that back button and all of this. But uh, yeah. that lens button you're asking about, yeah, that's customizable. So you can make that be whatever you want. Okay. So by default, it's set to focus hold, where it's like, you know, you focus once and then you lock it by pushing in that lens. I like the eye focusing, so I go in there and I choose IAF. And the, okay. the reason why I do that, so Andre, I think I told you this story. I learned my lesson trying to shoot basketball with the, and I left the, the eye focusing on, uh -huh. and the camera went bananas because it's like, you know, there's 10 guys on the court and they're like right up next to the, the crowd and Everyone's the same same size in terms of the face. So the camera's right. like, bibbity bibbity, where do I go? Uh -huh. And so you have to turn off the eye focusing, right? But if I'm in that situation and I turn off the eye focusing, but I want it back on real quick, I can then just re-engage um, re it by pushing it and holding that button, which okay. works well for me. Um, and I think I told you that if you don't do it my way, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> only I have all the answers, right? <laughs> um, but it really is customizable. So you can, you know, if you disagree with me vehemently, you can, you can be, make that be almost whatever you want. Um, one big question we do get a lot is that like certain lenses have three buttons on them. Mm -hmm. Like I think and my, uh, my 135 has at least has two. two. Okay. I, well, maybe three. I, mine's out on loan right now, so I can't verify. But Yes, so you can't customize each one of those. They're all the same thing. And so, because that way, if you're holding the camera vertically, you can access those. Okay. And alternately, you can't be like, 
I want my 135 to do this and my 35 to do that, it's always going to be the same function. You know? Okay. 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 Yeah. Unless you go set for IAF on one camera and on another camera, you set it to do something else. And in that case, as it goes between cameras, it'd be a different thing. Okay. Does that, that make sense? Good. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Good. Good. Um, so I do want to, Go back to one of your images here that I think shows this eye focusing really well. Um, let me get my share screen back up. So it's kind of thumbing through these. This one. Ah, yeah. And I was like, and I zoomed in. And at first I was like, ah, he missed focus, right? Because it jumped in on the nose. Uh huh. But here, this is like super duper sharp. 1.8. I know. Yeah. I think, you know, and that's the thing is that that focusing method really makes shooting wide open uh, realistic. You know, I don't know about you, but I used to stop down on just a titch to make sure that my depth of field is good on the eyes. Right, and, right. Because a lot of time can't. you'll get the eyebrow sharp and the eyes will be out. Right. Where the edge of the eyeglass is. And the eyes will be out. Yeah. So, but definitely, this holds it. Oh, you can see my setup. You, you can see your setup in his eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this image. So before we just, you know, pick it apart with technically, but. Yeah, sure. So, so this guy is a CEO of a cannabis company. Okay. And uh, he, had, he had come to town. There was, uh, this was in Baltimore. And they were doing uh, they were doing an event where people who had weed convictions could get it all expunged. And so, you know, he uh, I think his company was involved somehow. Um, but my I did some of the weed event. He was there, but I also made a portrait of him beforehand in one of the hotels down in Arbor East, Baltimore. And I got the hotel to open up their whiskey bar for me. So we're getting close between the weed and the whiskey. And, um, you know, it was, it was just a really nice kind of uh, all the textures and all the colors were really rich yeah. and saturated. And, and then he had, uh, he had two people with him from the company. And then he had a whole bunch of product. So they had some, these were CBD uh, vapes, but... Mm -hmm. He, we just kind of pumped some CBD smoke into the room and, you know, his, uh, his employees were feeling pretty good by the time the shoot was over. And uh, I, I just kind of stood him up in front of these, these were these, these, uh, how do you, how do you explain it? They, these like uh, sconce type lamps that were on the wall. And mm -hmm. so I kind of set it behind him. I always kind of like that, that halo thing that yeah. you get from, you know, if you, if you look at a lot of classical, painting you'll you'll see that and then hit him with a little bit of gel from the side for some direction a little bit of fill to smooth out that shadow and uh it was like give me some boss attitude man he's got it, it yeah it really, really came across really well i thought thank um, you so are you using off-camera lights with this or yeah what's your lighting setup um i use pro photos um yeah uh, sometimes I'll rent a kit. Um, sometimes, well, sometimes I have to rent a kit to add more lights. Uh, but typically for a lot of stuff, I'll do a one light setup now and then use ambient light as my second. Mm -hmm. So it makes me think a lot about my location or the direction that I'm shooting, you know, et cetera. Um, if it's a more complicated job, especially like group portraits, or I just need to keep my production value higher, I'll, I'll rent a kit and uh, just set it all up and make sure that it all works and looks right. And the pro photos, I think, re work really well with our system as, as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, it's, it's gotten to the point, even like with the R3, you know, we've actually issued firmware updates for the cameras to specifically for pro photo. So, um, I think, you know, using those is a, is a really good choice. Um, I also wanted to bring up this image too. Okay. I thought this was a great one as well. And this one, again, 
you know, we could just do this all night, right? Just like zoom in. It's so and ridiculous. See, see everything. And I think you use a 20 millimeter lens on this one. Yeah, uh, correct. Correct. Yeah. That, that's that cool. is probably my favorite piece of glass. I mean, I really like that 135, but that yeah. 20 is where I live. And yeah. This was, again, this was, this was lit. This was uh, one pro photo light uh, camera. I think it was camera right. And okay. um, I set it up in a little Chimera box. Uh, this was part of a story I did at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I was really, really interested in how it impacted small businesses. And this was again for the Washington Post. Um, I do a lot of work for the Post, so I'll just put that out there now. And um, they wanted to do something on, on what was going on with service workers, restaurant workers, et cetera. And to me, I was a lot more concerned with the smaller operations, the mom and pops, you know, not the big restaurant groups. Right. Um, you know, they, they, uh, they have access to, to capital that, you know, the owner of Open Crumb, this guy here, doesn't have. And, and they, they have an ability to weather stuff like this, you know? And, and so, you know, for him, it was him. It's his restaurant. I mean, period. You know, mm -hmm. I think his girlfriend worked there with him. And that's it. And he had just recently opened. Like, I think he, he, he had just opened within a year. And he was doing well. He, he was not in the red his first year and then the pandemic hit and uh, I kind of cold called him. I mm -hmm. rolled up on him and knocked on the door and introduced myself and told him the story I was working on. And, you know, he was talking to me and this is so early in the pandemic that we weren't even wearing masks yet. Oh yeah. This was right at the front. This was at the very beginning of the shutdown and all the restrictions and, uh, you know, in between orders, I got him to just kind of come out of the kitchen, open the door, and uh, I set it up. I was moving the light out of the way when customers came in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and as soon as we got a spare minute, I just pulled it in and, you know, made this frame. Yeah. Um, so actually, uh, Matt's asked a, a good question, too. I mean, I think this kind of comes up a fair amount, especially with these cameras, is he says, have you used the ProPhoto on-camera flash with radio controlled off-camera? And does it communicate well and does it take abuse? I have not used the on-camera flash. I just use a remote. So okay, so you, you use like the little... Um, I use the little teeny one. What do they call it? Little puck looking thing? The Air the, PTL? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And um, so you're using that with like a, a B series light or an A series light or B, B? series light. So uh, B10, B1s, B whatever comes from the rental house. <laughs> whatever they have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's something too. I don't know. I'm sure you do this, but a lot of folks who are newer to the system, I, I don't know if the audience is or not, there is a setting in the camera to disable that live view setting effect as well. So, like that exposure preview. Mm -hmm. um, are you turning that off when you're when you're using those strobes? I am. I actually created a memory position in the camera. Okay. Great. And, um, it uh, so when whenever I light, I just switch it right to that. Um, it pulls up my settings. It turns off the auto ISO and sets it to a fixed ISO number, a low number. Um, turns off that that uh, what do they call it? Effect preview? Is that what they call it? Live view setting effect. Yeah. Live view setting effect. It turns that off so that I can see what's going on and uh, I, I roll with it like that. But having it in the menu, I mean, in the memory is great because all yeah. I got to do is turn it one notch from yeah. M to one. And it's funny, you're, you're like the perfect example of like the, the made up photographer that I used to use as like the, the example, right? You know, of like, <laughs> oh, this is great for, you know, if you're in the studio or whatever, you could just set it to you know memory recall one two or three and but a lot of folks don't use that because you know they don't know to set it um mm -hmm. you know and so if you're out there in the zoom world can you see my video as well or mm -mm, just the just stop sure. yeah. so on the dial on the camera you've actually got a setting that says one two and three mm -hmm. you know and this is where you 
you can set all your favorite stuff, you know, like in say manual exposure, and you're going to go into the menu and tell it to uh, register custom set, and then you can set it to one, two, or three. Um, there is, I will give you a warning, um, both Andre and the folks listening, is that there's another setting in there for like one, two, three, four. Like, so there's setting one, and then in one, there's one, two, three, four settings. Yeah, well. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Don't use those. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> what it does is it saves those to an SD card. So uh, okay. if your card's not in there, and then you're like, oh man, I had that really great setting. And it's on like block three of that four, you won't get it. Got so it. I, you know, to me, those are kind of those are dead to me. Um, yep. Those are really for that person who uses the same cards and the same settings and everything. And has um, a spreadsheet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because then you would have twelve different settings. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, which one is this? You know? <laughs> Um, and then on top of that, you could actually load in, you know, you could on the R4, one of the big improvements is, is saving all your settings to an SD card. Yeah. Um, or real pro tip, you can save all your settings to your phone. Oh, no, well. tell me how to do that. Uh, I can't hear. Okay. Because okay. We'll talk. We'll the, talk. <laughs> the limitations of it. But essentially what you do is you, you know, you can pair the camera with the phone over Wi-Fi and you can use the, your phone as a remote control. But in the menu system for the, for the phone's app, it'll say um, save or load settings. And so you can copy all those over to your phone and you can actually hold about 10 different presets in your phone for your camera, mm -hmm. um, which is nice for me because even though somewhere in my office I have an SD card labeled settings, I don't know where it is. Um, <laughs> somewhere. You know where your phone is. I know where my phone is. Yeah. Uh, usually, if not, I can find it. Do you um, use Imaging Edge to save them? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. So you're we're using Imaging Edge to do that. Okay. So uh, the Imaging Edge mobile um, is, is what you want. Yeah. Um, so that, that works really, really well. Um, and then you can also use it, you know, to control the camera over Wi-Fi and, and all of that here. I was using it on my laptop yesterday for a shoot. I was shooting tethered. And okay. And that was really great because I use Lightroom and Lightroom does not support tethering for Sony. No, they don't. Which pissed me off. And, it's irritating. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I don't use Capture One, which I know does, but I wasn't ready to drop another 300 bucks just to tether. And then lo and behold, Imaging Edge allowed me to uh, yeah. shoot his job yesterday, tethered. You know, the client could see what was going on. And yeah. uh, I look like a pro and go. everything was good. Yeah. yeah. And it's a pretty seamless, like if you're doing Imaging Edge desktop, you know, for the tethering, it's pretty seamless, mm -hmm. uh, you know, very, very fast to set up. You just have to set the camera's PC remote function on mm -hmm. and then you're good to go. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I would say too, is that um, you've got, you do have two USB ports on the camera. You've got a micro USB. Uh, which we primarily use for remote controls and that kind of thing. And then we've got USB type C. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're like, which one do I use? You could use either, but USB type C will make your life much easier, you know, because an uncompressed RAW file from the camera is about 120 megabytes and transferring those, the camera can go up to 10 frames per second, right? Yeah. Transferring in one second, 10, 120 meg files, um, that's a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, so, yeah. C is I, your friend. I do use the C, and my tether cable is like that thick. So <laughs> good. It locks <laughs> into place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, I don't know. Have you tried tethering it over Wi-Fi to your computer? I don't see how that could possibly move the images. It does it. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. It's a. It is slower, but if you're in a situation where you know where the cameras are in your remote or whatever. You can uh, control the camera either through, like the camera can set up its own Wi-Fi network, like an ad hoc network that you can then log your computer into, hmm. um, or you, if they're sharing the same access point, they could they can go through that as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, in a pen. technology, right? Yes. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, and Matt did I see this in the chat now? 
He said, use the saved setting to SD card when it goes to service because they will reset everything. And that uh, is a pro tip for somebody who has sent something to service because they do reset everything. Okay. Yes. Yep. So, and the reason why we do that, because people do ask that, is that we need, you know, we have a certain battery of tests that they have to do. And like, if you've enabled some weird setting that disables the test, they, they don't know. So they essentially, they reset everything to make sure that the camera can uh, perform back to factory standards again. They did not do that to me on my clean and check though. Usually not. If it's just a clean and check, usually not. But you know, if, if you're like, hey, you know, this button doesn't work or something like that, or I dropped it and I broke the screen, a lot of times they do reset it just to make sure that everything is, is happy. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. With the yeah. I have uh, fielded some uh, angry phone calls from folks <laughs> before that, that, that had changed. Um, so let's, let's go back to some of your images here. Yeah, this guy at Open Chrome was just fantastic. Uh, that's really great. Great image. Um, let's circle back here. So what's that's going on in this one? That's the, the one. one. Yeah, that was, um, so this is from the March on Washington last year. The, uh, I guess, what is it, 53rd anniversary or whatever anniversary it was. And she was not at the main site by the Lincoln Memorial. This was, I walked over to the Martin, Ling, Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial and um, she had this whole Afro future thing going on. And um, I just kind of rolled up and was like, okay. I mean, you can see me standing there in her glasses, but yeah, I like this trick. This is fun. There you are. There I am. There I am. And uh, but if you look at, I mean, when you pulled it up, you could see like the pores in her skin, like. Yeah. Yeah. That, that 135 is just so stellar. Oh man, it's butter. It's butter. Yeah. So that's my second favorite lens. And and to be honest, when I'm walking around covering stuff, if I only had two lenses, it would be the 20 and the 135. I'll make everything in the middle work somehow. Yeah. And what you're a prime shooter, right? I am. Yeah. yeah. So what are you shooting with right now? You got the 20 and you got the 135. What are the other lenses you have? I've got a 35 one eight and a 55 one eight. And yeah, both, uh, both are really nice and small too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what was really nice was like all the speed that was available, you know, um, my previous kit, I had lenses in, in my previous kit that I had had for 20 years. And, you know, everybody likes fast glass, but this glass is way faster. It's, it's just nice and it's sharp wide open. Yeah, you know, that's the, um, the real benefit, I think, for um, new glass, right? Because a lot of folks, I don't know if you, um, if you did this, but a lot of folks will adapt lenses to a, a new system, you know, even, even if it's not ours, you know, SLR lenses being adapted to mirrorless is not new. Um, right. Downside is, I mean, A, the, the focusing motors aren't, aren't right. Like they work, but it's, it's not right, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is that they're just old designs. You know, you can go buy a brand new lens, but it might be a 20 year old design. Right. Um, you know, which puts us at, was it designed for film or early meg low megapixel digital or where are we at? Mm. The, the yeah. new lenses are, are really pretty good, you know? Even that, what's that? I said they're optimized. I mean, yeah. it, I didn't think about it in those terms, but I certainly saw the results out the gate. Even yeah. when uh, I got to try cameras before I made my switch. Mm -hmm. And like, just right out of the case, I was like, okay, this is better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Well, net 135 is something special too. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we're not, um, it's, it's really one of our, I think everybody's favorite lens. Like, I know you talked to David. You yeah. Know, yeah. David too. Like David, me and 
a couple other guys on our team were all like, hey, what's your favorite lens? Everyone's like the 135. Mm -hmm. So, so good. Um, let me get back to some of your photos. Share the screen. Here we go. So she's doing that. She's at the March on Washington. We skipped this gal. Yeah. So her name is Hayes. Uh, she she hates police. Mm -hmm. She hates police. Did I mention that she hates police? I believe uh, maybe. <laughs> and I will see her all around town. I still see her if I go out. And um, this, uh, where was this one? This might have been at the Dion K vigil. So a few days, maybe a couple weeks after he was killed. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, this is the 135 again. And, and you know, I, th I think we had talked about this a little bit before. I'm going to kind of segue off of this picture for a second. Yeah. But um, I will typically use the, uh, the 135 on the R4 and then the 20 on the R3. And mm -hmm. I, 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 it's, it's like a, a, I, I find that the focus is just better on the R4. And so yes. the longer glass, I'm, I'm able to acquire what I need a lot better than, than if, I, if I put the long glass on R3. Yes, I mean, exactly. Yeah. That's, um, so to kind of nerd out for a second. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the, um, the, the cameras have, have two types of focusing systems, right? One's called contrast detection and the other is called phase, not face, but phase, so P-H-A-S-E, phase detection. And the, um, the R3's phase detection covers about, oh, 45 odd percent of the frame, plus or minus, my math is not great, but that, there you have it, which is pretty good, right? Would you consider typically an SLR, it's a little shorter area than that. The R4's phase detection sensor covers about 72% of the frame. Uh, okay. uh, so it's a much wider area. And so if you ever look at like the R3, um, sometimes at the, let me show you this. So do you see those black bars on, on my screen? Yeah. Like the black, light gray black box? Okay. Those yeah. are the edges of the phase detection area. And on the R4, because it's much bigger, you're getting a much wider continuous focus, which really helps with those longer lenses. Mm. Um, and in the R3, it's much smaller. So with those, it's, it's fine with the wider lenses, but you start to notice it on the wider or on the more telephoto. Right. And I go in and I actually, I'll show you this here. There is this setting called phase detect area, okay? So I turn this on, so it's on that red camera menu, menu number eight. <clears throat> and if it's turned off, do you see how the, that black box went away? Oh, okay. So I leave it on as a visual cue of saying, hey, dummy, keep your focus point inside that box, right? Uh, because if I go outside of this box, my focusing is not going to be as reliable. Ah, okay. At least in continuous. Um, oh, so I, okay. So now I, have the, now I have the box. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And your R3 has a very similar, it has a, it's called the same thing. And it's in a similar spot. It's just a little, maybe a slightly different sub menu. Mm -hmm. um, but especially with the R3, I think it's really key to turn that on. Okay. You, you get a lot of portrait photographers who use that IAF in continuous, which is the right thing to do. Um, but especially in a studio, when you shoot vertically, it's putting the eye right at the edge of the phase detection area. So it kind of, it can bounce a bit. Got it. Um, so that's why you see like the R4 is going to have better focusing uh, the, uh, compared to the R3 is that, that wider phase detection area. 
guy. Um, maybe I'll put that on my lens button. Uh, you can maybe. I, I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, possibly. Uh, my guess is no, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We'll you stumped we'll stump me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just leave it on all the time. You know, I think some of the features on that display button are really controversial for some folks. Like, do you like the vir the virtual horizon? You know, do you like all this information? You can turn all that stuff off. Mm -hmm. but for me, the phase detection is uh, really key to uh, keep on. So, so yeah. you, and to be clear, like you can't turn off that phase detection AF. Like, it's just showing you the box of like right. where to keep your focusing point. Okay. Uh, so. And you probably, if, you, if you're in a situation like your R3 where, you know, especially with the wider lenses, if you choose like the wide area AF, like you were talking about that you use as those mm -hmm. grab shots, um, that'll help speed it up as well. Okay. So like had we, you know, we had spoken and actually, sorry, I'm gonna jump into the autofocus again. Um, how you were saying that sometimes like you notice like different speeds of, of focusing and um, here we go, share screen. I took a screenshot of that, that little chart that I showed you. Oh yeah, yeah, you did send that over, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, if you've got one of our cameras out there and you said, okay, so I've got this, this range of wide, which covers the whole frame, zone, which covers a little bit less than wide, flexible spot large, which is less than zone, flexible spot M, which is less than large, and then flexible spot, small and expanded flexible spot, which cover the smallest part of the frame. As we're shrinking down that focus area, um, the more accurate, can you, and let me just see. Oh, never mind. I'm not going to do that part. So as you shrink down that focus area, the more accurate it gets, but um the longer it takes to do it so like wide is is used for more faster unpredictable subjects so i'm not surprised that's why you use it at like a protest or something like that mm -hmm. because things are moving erratically and happening fast whereas like i live over here in flexible spot medium a lot because you know the subject might be fast but i could probably guess where they're going to go or it's a somewhat unpredictable but a slower moving subject and that works okay for me mm -hmm. uh, so you know, it's really about kind of mastering what those do. I think that'll help you, but then also just, I mean, yes, the, the, um, the four focuses faster than the three. You know, I related that story to you. We had one of the journalists here in Minneapolis covering the George Floyd, uh, the protest in response to the George Floyd, Floyd killing. And he was having a hard time with the camera focusing at night and he was using uh, flexible spot small. So he's really trying to get the camera to focus on a teeny tiny area in really low light. Mm. And, you know, the solution is really to make that bigger. Right, it's, right. It's going to focus faster in that situation. Yeah. Sure. And, and so in the dark, it's best to use the larger or the wide, yeah. flexible spot large or wide. Exactly. Yeah. Low. And any, yeah. anything that you, is just, you, you got to give it more to grab onto, right? Yeah. And then that, that was the hiccup for me earlier when I when I got these because I, I got these uh, last March or I'm okay. yeah March of 2020 yeah. and um, yeah I was running into that at night and it was driving me nuts I'm like why am I missing shots but yeah then I just kept playing with until I found you know I, I stumbled into it you know like yeah. those things when you don't read the manual but <laughs> <laughs> you know it worked it out it's it's always validating when a guy like you is like Hey, you know your camera behaves like this, and I'm like, yeah, I did. You know, <laughs> like you just because you found it intuitively, you know, and you, yeah. you just kind of figured that out. So it's yeah. always kind of nice to know that the the theory matches the practice. You well, know what I mean? So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, alternately though, the nice thing about that smaller spot is that it does let you like shoot through chain link if you had to. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you can kind of. You tweak it based on your situation. Okay. Okay. For sure. And all that's in the function button too. So yeah. Well, it should be. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess you can customize that. I think I moved a couple things around. But right. Definitely one of the things I put 
on my function menu. And then I can hit that real quick if I'm having trouble or if I need to tune it a little bit more, boom, it's right there. I can, I yeah. can fast. I mean, it's like that function menu is awesome. Just boom, yeah. right there. Sure. And then boom, I'm back up to shooting. It's faster than chimping. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And you can do it in the viewfinder too. So while you're shooting, you just need to change something, right? Just hit function and then you can scroll through and do it. Oh, there you go too. Yeah. 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 yeah, I always tell people like when you first get the camera, spend like, a couple hours, you know, while you're watching, you know, Handmaid's Tale or something, just set it up, you know, tweak the custom buttons. Um, I'm going to go into my handy menu. So this menu here is going to be your best friend, right? The custom key for stills, for video, for playback. That function menu, you have a different function menu for stills and for video, mm -hmm. right? So if you're doing different stuff, and then finally, you've got that my menu, right? Yeah. So if you're not into, um, you know, certain things like formatting, you know, it's, it's easy to have it on the my menu. So yeah. those I, that was the first thing I moved was format. I know, I know. It, it's you know, we deep in the menus, it's impossible it, to find. It is. So I'll tell you that the nice thing about what we've done over the past. 10 odd years I've been with Sony is actively listen to customers. So one of the things that we've heard loud and clear was on the original like alpha series, like the R2s and the, even the nines is that formatting is buried. Like, how do you get to it? You know, and the solution is, well, we can just put it in my menu and you can kind of access it wherever you want. Mm -hmm. So for all you attendees out there as well, um, get, if you don't know your local Sony pro rep, fine. You know, reach out to us. We can find, put you in touch, and call and complain. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really how things get better. You know, um, so just let us let us know, and then we, you know, we have a form that we submit, and sometimes we get a good response, and sometimes things don't change um, until all of a sudden they do. You know, we're like, oh, we've been asking for this for years, and all of a sudden it's there. Um, yeah, Andrew, I, I don't know the thinking behind why they put formatting there. I mean, I used to, I know there are other brands that put it on the exterior of the camera, like a two button press, and I, but I don't know why we don't do that. I think it's because the buttons are customizable and that kind of thing. Um, and I think some of the reason why it was buried originally maybe was because they didn't want people to do it accidentally. Um, but I don't have a good answer. Um, the other thing I would say too, while we're waxing about formatting, is that up until the Alpha One, all formatting on ours is essentially a deep level formatting, so or low level formatting. So once you do it, you will not recover those images. So make sure um, that your stuff is backed up before you do so. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so no I've image learned, rescue is going to work on that. No, I've learned that lesson painfully. So okay. don't, don't okay. do it. <laughs> okay. okay, good to know. Don't, don't do it. I, I hope I don't have that issue. No. I think to myself more than once. <laughs> yeah. God, it's always like this sinking feeling when you hit that and you're like, oh crap, I didn't back that. Yeah, up. yeah, there's usually beer involved. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a little wine helps me edit, you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes uh, it's a bad idea. Yeah. Um, so let's pull up, we've got a few more images I think we can go through and we can kind of chat while we oh, do. You know, one more thing I throw in, yes. my, uh, in my, my menu is, I got a couple things in it. So I got like silent shooting so I can get to it quickly off and on. Mm -hmm. But I put the, the, the sensor clean in my, my menu. And every time I format a card, I clean my sensor and then shut it off. Does it work? It's better than nothing. I know it is better than nothing. It's so better the than nothing. yeah. So this this I, I say that because the sensor cleaning mode, you know, it just vibrates the sensor. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but you do need to if you clean your own sensors, you do need to engage that um, to per, to lock the stabilization system. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now I say that uh, we take no responsibility if you clean your sensor and damage it. So, but you know. A lot of folks do it, so yeah. yeah. Um, 
but yes, that's that's good hygiene practice. The other one, do uh, you just have like a rocket blaster too? Uh, like like one of these. Oh no, not that. That's terrible. Yeah, idea. yeah I don't do that. No, like I don't uh, know what you mean. So a rare third party accessory endorsement, Giotto's large rocket blaster, G I O T T O S, um, is a really wonderful little puff to clean off your sensor in between lens changes. Okay. Um, normally I dance around third party accessory endorsements, but that one I, uh, I love it. So let's go back to some of your photos though. All right. So we talked about this gal a little bit mm -hmm. and here we go. Where mm -hmm. are we here? Tell me about this one. S same story, same uh, uh, restaurant story. Okay. Um, this this was, was, were they the executive sous chef for some kind of chef in charge at, mm -hmm. at a local restaurant in DC uh, called Maiden. Maiden, it almost got away from me. And, okay. um, very popular restaurant in town they do uh i think it's like middle eastern food maybe lebanese or something like that it's good yummy stuff and um so she they uh i can't remember their pronouns so i'm going to stick with they um yeah. they uh they they posed for me instead of doing the owner in this case we went with somebody who was really impacted by it and was you know, was going to be in deep water if if the restaurant shut down and and the restaurant had gone to you know like most did to carry out only. Um, it's really funny to be seeing these pictures that I shot indoors because like within a week after I completed this story, I was not going inside anymore. Before I even finished it, I was starting to be like, I don't think I'm going inside. Why don't we shoot it out front? <laughs> You know? you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Isn't it so funny how rapidly all that changed? It was. You know? Ugh. Ugh. Like, but you know, we even went to the CDC saying don't wear masks. To all of a sudden, we're like, oh yeah, that's stupid. You should be wearing a mask. You know? Right. 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 And now we're back to no masks. So it's um, even vaccinated. I mean, in my building here, where my studio is, they just uh, relaxed the mask requirement inside the building and I'm still wearing my mask inside the building and I'm vaccinated. So I don't, I don't really know how to take all this stuff, but this was one light off camera and then just ambient building. And, you know, I didn't want to overpower that fire in, in the oven. So, you know, and that added, you know, a little bit of warmth to it. Um, I, I, I clearly, I didn't gel the light. I often will just put a little bit of a slight warming filter on a light sure. to kind of keep people from, you know, give them, give their skin a good, healthy glow. Plus everybody likes golden light anyway. But in this case, I didn't because I wanted that little bit of pop since everything else was going to be warm in the frame. All that rich, warm wood. Do you see yeah. this inlay on that countertop? Oh, down, down here at the bottom? Yeah, I mean, this is nice stuff. Like, yeah. you get a number on that. But they came out, I mean, tack sharp. Again, I focus, boom. Yep. You know, before I even knew what I was doing, it was doing it. Yeah, makes it, it really just makes your life easier. I mean, I think at the end of the day, that's what a lot of these technologies are all about, mm -hmm. you know, is how, how can we make, make your life easier? And I, I did get up, by the way, while you were talking about this, I heard you the whole time, but. Mm -hmm. to, you know, this oh, is that's the, it. I've seen those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This I've got like three or four of these and they live okay. in my bags. Okay. Um, so David asked, uh, do I need to lock the sensor before using this? And the answer is no. You know, so like as I clean them or as I use to like change, change the lenses. And this, by the way, is a horrible way to do it. Um, <laughs> always change your lenses uh, with the camera facing down and then just hit it with a puff of air and it's good, it's good to go. Um, and then, you know, that, that usually takes care of most dust issues uh, for me as well. So, uh, good. So I think we're doing okay on time. Yeah. 
Yeah, we yeah, got about we 20 minutes about? left. Oh, okay. 20 minutes left? Okay. Yeah. So, just want to make sure. Okay, good. And we did talk about, uh, I, I do want to touch base on this too, because during our phone call, you had said that you had, had started to do some work for your, is your wife working for a yoga studio? Is that right? She owns oh. My, my wife owns a yoga studio, but she had to shut it down during the pandemic and give back the space. Um, she's currently looking for a new space, but she's been doing online. But I had just started shooting some promotional videos on IG for her. I, I, I forgot to send you those. Um, but I was shooting them with the R4 and then, you know, cutting them in Premiere. And, you know, it was really kind of cool was... Um, I was just shooting video the same way I was shooting still. I I, uh, I used to use on my other cameras. I had a uh, what do you call that fancy loop with the with the whole bracket that you stick in? Oh, like the hood man? It wasn't a hood man. It was the other billion dollar one. <laughs> it was uh, like a Zacuto. Zacuto, that's the one. Yeah, that's <laughs> one Zacuto. Oh. And and I would hold it to my eye though. Mm -hmm. and look at the back of the screen like that. I yeah. just can't get away from like holding a camera to my eye. And uh, I didn't even try a Zakudo on the R4. I just held it to my eye and yeah. was shooting with it like that and shooting video. And I still had the same stable, like three points when you're shooting. It was a crazy setup. I, I don't necessarily do it like that now, but when I first got the cameras and I was just playing with them mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 the thing about it, it was hot yoga. So I'm like in this 105 degree room and it's hot Pilates. And you know, you, you drop the cameras about 20 minutes before mm -hmm. and, and just let them warm up in there so there's no condensation or whatever. And uh and then you know they, they still perform. I mean, I still have the battery life, you know. Um and uh well what kills battery life? Is it heat or cold? Cold, I guess, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Cold. Okay. Um, well, maybe that's why I'm so impressed with the battery life. Um, <laughs> come visit in February here in Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I made some really cool videos and, uh, you know, we, my, my same son again, he's getting a lot of, I wonder if he's watching cause he's an MPPA member too. Um, but he got, uh, he, he also makes beats and whatnot. He gave me a couple beats to throw in the music so we could make sure we didn't infringe on anyone's license. Nice. And, uh, and uh, I did, uh, I don't know, four or five of these in the space. Oh, shoot. I was doing that when I had the loner cameras that David sent over. Yeah, the, the Alpha 9s. No, they were, they were they are? R3s and R4s. Yeah, because he gave me, I told him what I wanted to buy what I was thinking about buying and you know you Sony pro guys I love you guys uh this is a different like pro situation and I'm not just saying this because I'm over here talking to you on this MPPA it's a whole different <laughs> pro situation than I'm used to um not to knock my previous manufacturer but the the you guys have just done more in the past year than I've gotten in the past 30 okay it's nice to hear yeah and uh i got to i got to test drive those cameras for several weeks and so that was part of what i was doing and i was like okay babe let's do these videos now you know and so we banged out like four or five of them in the few weeks that i had them and they were really good they came out nice and unfortunately i forgot to send them to you so we can't play any of them uh and I would have to really search to find one. That's OK. Zoom is usually a little choppy, I think, on some of that. Um, yeah. But what I wanted to call out, again, it, what struck me in our conversation is just how naturally you found some of these things. So forgive the, the um, behind the scenes look. Um, so if you see my webcam, mm -hmm. right, that A7S mm -hmm. with the microphone in the shoe and you know, you're calling it that the R has that digital audio shoe. Yeah. Pass the, the microphone straight through it. Yeah. And it sounds really good. It um, sounds amazing. That's what I ended up getting. Yeah. Was that was a smaller mic. You've got two, one with XLR jacks, and then you have a smaller one. 
Um, yep. And it's a digital, and then you can go all the way from omnidirectional all the way to shotgun yeah. and whatever they call the one in the middle. And um, it works. I mean, if you're doing a little stand up in the, uh, in the street and, it, and you hit that thing on shotgun, you've got usable sound. I mean, yeah. I've been able to use it without using a live. I've done a couple of these things because I was working on another project that is not complete yet, but it came out of the protests. And uh, one of the things I had to do was really a still project. And I did some video portraits as well, but then I was, I needed to talk to the people about why I was making their portraits. And I just threw that mic on there and just recorded them. And, you know, in some, fairly noisy situations. I mean, I'm just on the street with stuff going on around me. They're coming through clear as day. Yeah. Um, I, I was actually a little surprised. I, I would, the first time I did it, I, I ran it back and I listened to it and I was like, holy shit, I can hear them. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I, I just had to just say, okay, I, I can trust this thing. So it, it's, uh, that actually, I'm glad you brought that up because that digital mic is one of the things that really, um, I'm just really excited about. And I'm looking forward to doing a lot more motion with it. Um, you know, there's no cords. It draws power yeah. right from the camera, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, exactly. And so we, I've actually got our lavalier set up right now, which mm -hmm. is, um, again, it's a mic that normally is geared towards more of the broadcast group. Mm -hmm. um, but we make this adapter, which, uh, the lav mic slides into and it's a, it works the same as what you do is that it draws so that's what why i showed this here is can't get an idea of it um it draws power from the camera and it's not much you know it's maybe a couple percentage points extra but in the case of this one like i don't need to have any batteries in this uh microphone at all so it just mm. pulls power and it's it's clean mm. you know uh, my setup's not clean right now because I've got HDMI and I've got power running into it. But if you're out on the street, it'd be, you know, you don't have to have cords dangling around or anything. Right. Just, you know, just your mic, your uh, headphones for check mm -hmm. audio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, maybe the next thing is Bluetooth audio out. I don't know. Mm. I always thought mm. that would be. Uh, but yeah, so you're using it for for uh, video as well, mm -hmm. like motion, which is. Yep. and uh, that's working well are you using 4k or using 1080 with it uh for those i did 1080 because they were all going to be web web videos yeah. um, and and so i didn't see you know the point in having those big files um i have played around with a little bit of 4k um mm -hmm. i've only got one i've got a 4k monitor in my studio i don't even have a 4k tv at home but really? you know like you look great right now um <laughs> 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 but the 4k looks really good it does look good yeah yeah the 4k is, is really very very nice i mean you know to to be real honest it's like um video is not my big thing you know i do just some home videos on it and it, even though i've got 4k tvs it doesn't end up on the tvs it just ends up on the computer yeah right yeah um but you know obviously a nice thing about it is if you do shoot it in 4k it'll um Give you a little extra cropping room if you want to punch in. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Which to, you know, if you're not aware, if you do switch it to 4K in the, like if you go to the camera and go to the, on the dial and go to the movie mode, and you can see this, if the camera is set to 4K, it automatically crops in. Oh, really? That's yeah. Sweet. And the reason why is that the soup, we call it Super 35 or APS-C crop in the menu. Um, it's a sharper 4K than the full frame. Because with full frame, you have to do some um, pixel binning to reduce the resolution of the 60 megapixel sensor down to 8 megapixel. Uh, whereas that crop is ends up being an oversampled 4K. So it's, it is sharper. So in the future, kind of just a, a thing to, to uh, keep in mind. Oh boy, so where are we at? So we talked about some, some audio, we talked about your video, we talked about your big prints. 
you said you got like a 40 inch long print out of this right yeah yeah and, and to be honest that was actually the r3 that's the r3 that was yeah. the r3 and yeah. it's bulletproof yeah it, it, it was of the image that's on the front of my website i didn't send you that as a sample because it was on the r3 i it, either okay. either car either either camera is like yeah but one thing i will say the 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 way the r4 handles versus the way the r3 handles the r4 is a big improvement ergonomically you know they you guys have have made the the back button focus uh much bigger easier to find intuitively i yeah. noticed you did that with the a what is it this a7c yeah. That has a bigger back button focus as well. Um, it uh, let me think what else. The, uh, oh, the exposure compensation dial locks now. You know, so if you walk yeah. or you run in, you're not going to accidentally spin it. You did another thing where you where you pushed. I don't know if you guys can see, but the exposure compensation dial is a little bit more forward, and so you're not going to mix it up when you spin your wheels. Right, and on the R, sorry, and and on the R three, they're a lot closer together, and the R and the exposure comp doesn't lock. So sometimes you can you can screw it up, you know, you'll spin the wrong one. Um, so those type of things were really good. I, I feel like the distance between the movie record button mm -hmm. and and the AF button, I, I don't know if you moved it over like one millimeter or something, but it was enough that I never, with this camera, accidentally hit record and then see the little black message come up that says, you cannot do this in this mode. <laughs> and I'm like, I just missed the picture, you yeah. know? And I've had that happen to me in the R3, you know? Um, yeah, that's so that mixed, mixed blessing, right, of the, of the disabling the movie mode button, mm -hmm. you know? Because, like, obviously it'll stop you from taking video. Right. right. But it throws you the error. Yeah. Right. Instead of yeah. just instead of just ignoring it, it actually throws the error out. Yeah. Yeah. So put that on your form. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. and and maybe we'll get a firmware update or something that'll fix that. Maybe. You know, yeah. you never ever know. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I don't know if you do this. One of the big things, especially on the older bodies like the R threes, the original A nines. Uh huh. Um, a lot of folks will actually program both the AEL button and the AF on button to be AF on. So that oh. way if you if you miss hitting one, you'll you know just mash it on the other. Yeah, you know, I, I don't have the R three with me, but mm -hmm. I my thumb doesn't even really get over to that AEL button. Yeah. I'm I think it depends like, on how you hold it. Yeah. 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 I don't really get over there. I've got because like everything is right here. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's I just don't touch it. I never get there. I never get there. I when you said AEL button, I'm, I was like, what AEL button? <laughs> <laughs> so, but but I definitely I like the ergonomics a lot better on this. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the the I mean, it's been a long time since I really liked the camera, mm -hmm. and I like this camera. I like this camera a lot. Um, I, I like this new little camera you sent me too, though. I, I don't know how much I would use it to work, but it seems quite capable. It is. It's a fun. It's a fun travel camera for sure. You know, yeah. they, they launched it as like a the travel and vlogging camera. Um, but I I think, and obviously we're here to talk about the R series, but yeah. um, I do think that the the C gives you that little extra. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop, that's French. Um, a little added inconspicuousness, right? Sure, uh, sure, you know, sure. It is, it is smaller and it's, you know, it's, it's easier. More harmless. Yeah, you could throw it in your pocket, you know, yeah. if you got a coat pocket or something, it, it works yeah. well. We're and coming then, up on about five minutes now. Oh, okay, uh, great. So if anyone wants to put in questions, go ahead, do that now, and uh, let's get them answered before our time is up. For sure. So we'll just keep talking while we wait for that. Um, yeah, yeah. And you know, the other thing that I'll say yeah. about the mirrorless um, is 
you know, they're the smaller size and slightly smaller weight, um, slightly, well, it's more than slightly less weight compared to a full size DSLR, right? Um, you know, I got bulging discs in my neck. I have had so many motorcycle accidents, et cetera, et cetera. I can't be walking around with big heavy gear anymore. I, I just yeah. can't do it. And, and just, just the size and the weight of these things, it lengthens my day, you know? Yeah. Um, it is so much of a difference that I just said, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get me a MacBook Air now to match <laughs> the lightweight, you yeah. know? I'm just yeah. carrying less, you know? Um, um, we got a uh, question about uh, Andre, what are your favorite settings for shooting video? And if oh, you... my, my favorite settings for shooting video. I use um, that 50 frame, now I'm not a technical guy. I'm not, but I, I, let me look it up and I'll tell you because I said it and forget it. That's, that's my thing. And bear with me. Uh, let me see, 24 by 60. Does that answer your question? I'm also, it's 24, uh, I don't know what these things mean. 24 by 60. It's the last one on the menu. You mind oh. holding that? Up. Hold on a sec. I sent the Maybe link we can this. see it. Here we go. Let's see if uh, it's focus. Here, I'll show you on mine. Okay. There we go. That'll work. Uh, and I just threw in the chat, uh, Kelly was asking about the link to the microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just threw a link up there. It's ECM BM1, and that is on our website. So you're under file format. Are you choosing XAVCS HD? Uh, 4K. Right? Mine's set to 4K right now. You're set to 4K? Mm -hmm. and I was changing... HD when I first started playing with this. And I but used that 24P by 60M. Yep. So what you're seeing here is uh, t your frame rate. So either 30 or 24P. Mm -hmm. And then your bit rate, right? So you're shooting 60 megabits per second on average. It is variable bit rate, but that's on average. Mm -hmm. um, mine right now is set to 100. Um, no good reason other than that it I tell myself it looks better, but for what I do with it, it's no big deal. Yeah. I know that the 24P is closer to that cinematic look, and I've been exactly. trying and trying and trying to get everything more and more cinematic. And it's, it's definitely one of the reasons that I don't shoot as much motion as I would like, because I know how I want it to look. And, you know, that doesn't always happen. When I, I used to shoot, I used to freelance, and this was before I had the Sonys, um, I used to shoot a little video for NBC and they, they don't freelance that workout anymore. Um, but it was a completely different approach, a different, it's news video, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I did a couple of different projects where I kind of pushed it a little bit and was able to get it out there and looking really close to what I wanted to achieve. But those were on the longer projects that I pitched to them myself. Um, when I would get assignments, it was like, you know, we're going to do a head, we're going to do an interview, you know, two cameras set up, one tight, one wide, you know, shoot a little B-roll and get the hell out of there, send all this stuff up to New York and they'll cut it for me. Um, the stuff that I would pitch myself, I would, I would cut myself also. And um, I always wanted it to just look as, just as beautiful as possible. You know, and and I always like that 24p a lot better. Now you got the S and Q setting too. Yeah, geez, we don't have much time. We'll go over that real quick. So uh, I'll just say I like the 24p look too. So I even like yeah. my home videos. I just I I, I do that. So mm -hmm. S and Q, and it's probably not going to let me go into here right now. But so if I go to S and Q settings, I can choose. Um, the record setting of the final file, right? Either 24, 30, or 60p. And then I can choose the recording frame rate. So either up to 120, down to one frame per second. And if I do 120 frames per second at 24p, it works out to an in-camera five times slow-mo. If I do, let's, no, I can't do this at 24. If I speed it up to 100 to one frame per second, 
at 60p, it's a 60 times quick motion. Mm. So you're doing like the Keystone Cops, like blah, 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 yeah, all the yeah. Clips, right? Um, so downside to it, so in slow and quick, there's no audio. Um, but uh, in, this, in the slow-mo, it is a pretty slow, low bit rate. It's like 12 megabits per second, as we saw there. Um, but you know, it's in the camera. It's really easy to do. And then all you have to activate, you just hit S and Q and hit record. It's good yeah, yeah, just turn the, turn the dial. Exactly. And you could do like a, it's essentially, the camera does have the intervalometer in there as well. So if you want to do a time lapse on your own, you could do that. But S and Q is, again, kind of the easy way to do it because you can just set it to S and Q and essentially it works almost like an intervalometer. Mm. On, you slow it all the way down to like one frame per second. Yep. Okay. I'll play with that a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, with the interval time shooting, you can get, you, if you render it out to like, you can do like an 8K time lapse, you know, which is. Wow. Great, crazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So good. So I think, I think we're at it right about time. Is that right, Stingray? That is. Yeah. I do have one question because, um, I shoot a lot of video, Andre. Do, were you guys were you using the autofocus the whole time uh, with uh, with that yoga studio stuff? And how was that with video? I yes, I did use the autofocus. Um, I think I changed my settings so that it didn't snap to. It just kind of rolled a little bit slow, um, so it was it was not so jarring. But even in a full class, um, that. Again, it's that the face tracking works, right? The face and eye tracking works for video, doesn't it? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That, so it is an improvement from the R3 to the R4, as it works. Yeah, and, and so it worked like a charm. I didn't have any issues. Awesome. It was, I didn't have to think about it. How's that? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly what you want. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't have to fight with the equipment if you can't, right? So, yeah. good. So I, I think we're, we're yeah. right here. We Thank are. You. Thank you guys so much. This was so informative and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. And of course, any chance I get to see Andre's photos and his lovely face is always a, a treat for me. So. Hey, uh, it's always <laughs> good to see you too. We, we're going to talk. I need to call you. I need to talk to you before. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> well, you know the number. I thank you all for who joined us tonight. Uh, look forward to next month. Uh, we're going to be featuring Sony's PXW FX3 uh, on, um, I'm sorry, PXW Z280 and then the Alpha 9, A9 series, uh, June 23rd and June 24th. So look forward to that. Thank you, uh, Andre and Benjamin. I, we learned a lot. I'm pretty excited about the whole Sony line myself. So <laughs> got me when the money comes through. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time and both your expertise and uh, congenial conversation. So look for join MPPA. You can see this for free or and see it on our Vimeo side or just join us, even if just interested in just uh, what we do here. So thank you so much. <laughs>